move, ahead, look forward and look ahead um, right. to some degree. And it's obviously led me to many different industries, many different trades. Um, you're probably not even aware of. I've, I've done many different things. I've changed No, my this life. is, I, I only knew that you were a plumber or an apprentice plumber. That's all I knew. Yes, but, is that right? I mean, that, is that right? That, definitely. That comes down to, you know, mindset on myself. Welcome, David. David Straniero from Melbourne in Victoria, actually in Sorrento, I believe you are at the moment. I just want to take a second to introduce you to the audience that are listening to Healthy Nasty Kitchen podcast. We all know this podcast is about baking, business, entrepreneurship, self-development and growth in general. And I'm sure that by the end of the interview, people will understand why you are on this show. We, I, I got lucky to meet you probably seven, eight years ago, the first time. And, and I had my doubts, I had to be honest, but you proved everybody wrong and that's why you're here today. So please introduce yourself and just uh, make yourself welcome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Honestly, thank you for having me. It's, it's a pleasure and I'm blessed to have crossed paths with you on um, numerous occasions and I think um, on different occasions to where I start up and to where I am now. Um, so, yes, I'm David, so thank you for having me. Um, it's obviously, I'm in the hospitality industry uh, and it's been quite the journey for myself. Um, that's why I'm here today. Um, and yeah, honestly, I I'm, I'm hope I'm able to give a lot of value to everyone that's listening, so. I have no doubt, David, I have no doubt at all. I think you, uh, I just wanna let people understand that you are an example in my eyes. You are an example for every young future entrepreneur or future worker because you worked your beep off for so yes. many years, for so many years. And I've seen you, for, I'm not that older than you, but I'm older than you. I've been in the business for longer than you. And I've seen you blossoming, even though it's been in a certain amount of times, you're not over the all seven, eight years that you've been working in the hospitality business. I've seen you blossoming and that were, as a friend makes me very proud. Thank you. Yes, well, from when I first met you, I think I wasn't, obviously I wasn't a business owner. Um, yeah. So obviously I started you know, working in the hospitality industry, um, but it's been something through me growing up that I felt I've always been very determined, very motivated. I mean, from, you know, a little story from when I was 14, I think when we were legally able to work from 14 and 10 months, um, you know, I already aspired to, I applied at McDonald's, that was my first job. And the reason why I chose McDonald's was because I knew their training and the foundation of how they train their staff was well recognized. Yeah, how do you, st stop a second, how did you know that? It's just, when I was looking for work, it's something that I looked for, looked always looked forward, um, and I knew myself, you know, through speaking with family and peers, that they said McDonald's have a really good facility in terms of how they train their staff, and it's very well recognised. So I thought, why not try McDonald's? And yeah. that was my first job. I was yeah. thinking of at least I am able to be given a really good foundation and when I move forward from that at least it's well recognized so that's something that you know from where I first started so it's always been in me kind of innate to always you know move ahead, look forward and look ahead um, right. to some degree and it's obviously led me to many different industries many different trades um, you're probably not even aware of I've, I've done many different things I've changed no my this mind. is I, I only knew that you were a plumber or an apprentice plumber that's all I need. Yes, but, is that right? I mean, that, is that right? That, definitely. That comes down to, you know, mindset on myself. You know, my ability, I see it as a strength that, um, and, you know, there's been ups and downs through this, but I, my ability for me to change my mind has been a positive thing for me. I mean, it, you know, many, many people see it as changing your mind, um, you know, as a negative or, yeah. you know, they kind of demonize it or look down upon it. But I think it's a positive and I'm very blessed that, from you know through my parents they've kind of always i was just about me. to ask you 
how did it, uh, my question was going to be, it was something within you or something that your parents have passed on to you? Definitely something that my parents um, instilled in me and, you know, coming from that, their generation, it was stick to one trade, whatever it is, or stick to one career and perform yeah. in that career and remain in that career and specialize that. And that's something they ingrained in me, hence yeah. why I took on plumbing. And I okay. thought that was the first thing I will pursue. I seemed like, a, I felt like I enjoyed it at the time mm -hmm. and that's what I pursued. But from yeah. the moment that I decided to change my mind after yeah. doing you know, three, four years of plumbing, um, and through those three, four years, through being an apprentice, I would still always do my own jobs on the side. Which um, was McDonald's? Uh, no, my own jobs for myself. Okay, um, your personal... Personal plumbing jobs for myself. Okay. Um, through, so something that, you know, I was always trying to, to look ahead um, mm -hmm. and push myself. That's something that I felt I, I wanted to do within myself. I feel like, you know, if we challenge ourselves or I've challenged myself, you know, I grow more. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of when I actually told, going back to when I changed my mind and told my parents that I wanted to venture out and, you know, get into the business world and completely stop plumbing. Yeah. You know, just stop a second. Just tell everybody how old are you? Because people 29. don't know. 29. So you're 29. You're a business owner now, aren't you? You're married. Yes. You've been married, married for a few years, two or three years, if I'm not wrong. Two years now. Two years. Happily and married. You are, you are a home owner as well? Yes. Well, congratulations. You are such Thank an example for so many of us. But keep going with your story. Yeah. You were talking about. Thank you. Uh, in terms of when I changed my mind, I mean, yeah. it caused absolute havoc amongst the family. Um, you know, they were very disappointed in the decision because from what they instilled in me and what mm -hmm. they taught me was to stick to one thing and only do that one thing mm -hmm. coming out from school. Um, yeah. And, you know, that's for me, that was, you know, an important pivot in my life. How did you handle it? I mean, I mean. I'm sure that you must have spent days questioning yourself for, oh, is it going to be a good decision or was something that you just clicked? Okay, no, I go for it. Um, look, I did think about it. Um, and, you know, like many others, myself, you know, we're all human beings. There was a lot of fear there. I had a lot of fear on myself to know if I made that decision, what would people think of me? What would my family think of me? And I think all of those outside pressures that are put on us, is you know what makes us not make those decisions but you know through the people that i surround myself with um you know definitely my wife has been very influential to me um she wasn't my wife at the time rosanna but you know through surrounding yourself with positive people that made me make me the decision or influenced me to make also the decision to venture out in business um and it's then through then where i started working in finance and many other industries insurance and i've remember changed my insurance mind i remember times. the insurance yes well, you I know think, you need to try different things to be able you to probably what recall, you like. definitely you probably recall when i was working insurance as well as working hospitality i was yeah. trying to sell you an insurance policy i'm not sure probably if you probably no you were not you actually are very an integral person you have a, your integrity is unbelievable the insurance policy, I was saying that your integrity is above any level. Like I've seen many people uh, having that uh, mentality of being salesmen instead of being, you know, put yourself in a place where you establish a relationship, where you put the person per first and then your sales. Sales will come. And uh, that's something that I understood with the years and probably fear through resources um why hospitality david well i mean throughout my um journey in terms of the positions that i've worked in yes. it's always been with people um mm -hmm. something that i believe in myself one of my aspirations has always been to be a leader um, yeah. and to lead people in a positive way to fulfill their best life um, so through all my roles that I worked in, I would always be given the opportunity through hard work and patience to, mm -hmm. up, you know, to be promoted to whether it's a managerial position or a leadership position, because something that I feel like it's innate in me and it brings me a lot of pleasure to lead. Mm -hmm. So I guess to some degree, you know, I fell into the hospitality industry. Um, you know, sometimes we don't, we, we ask for things, you know, yeah. for but we don't know actually. Yeah we don't know what we're going to be presented with. So, you know, 
this had fallen in my path and I decided to go with it. I'm, I'm a big believer that sometimes we need to say yes more often and go with it because something... And try, give whether, it a go. Whether it's a positive or a negative, for me, it's always a positive, mm-hmm. um, even if it falls in, in that negative category. But I look at it as a positive way that, you know, it's something, an industry that I remain in till today. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it brings me a lot of pleasure that I deal with people on a daily basis um, but it's more so, you know, having that emotional intelligence to be able to manage and lead people. It brings me a lot of happiness to lead people, um, you know, in the right direction. And as I mentioned before, to live their best life, whether it's finding, you know, an employee who wants to earn a particular amount or an employee yeah. who wants to, you know, spend more time with their family, finding what ticks them mm-hmm. uh, or makes them tick and, you know, trying to fulfill that. Awesome. Another question that I have is uh, basically I was wondering if in your journey between your teenager age years and now that of course you are a a lived adult in your late 20s, is there anything or somebody that actually inspired you and uh, showed you way? He could be a parent, he could be a worker, he could be a leader, he could be a colleague anybody this is a figure a figure a person somebody that actually inspired you that gave you some inspiration yeah someone that inspired me uh is my wife my okay. wife has been my inspiration so awesome in, in what way um you know from the moment i met her and you know hence why we're married you know she's always wanted the best for me and always brought the best in me mm-hmm. and no matter what i've done in my journey she's always supported it um and for me, it's something, that, it's something that has got me to the position I am now. And, you know, I'm, I'm still growing. I don't know everything. We keep learning. But yeah. through her, it's, you know, put me in the position I am now. You know, from the moment of when I was a plumber, for example, through my wife, um, through her encouragement and through her guidance and for what she had accomplished and decisions she had made, it made me and inspired me to make a decision as she would have. So... She's definitely been my inspiration. She embraced everything, everything you wanted to do, which is wonderful. Yeah, just her positive outlook and, mm-hmm. you know, the way she goes about in making decisions or the way she goes about things, it's really been a, an influential thing to me. She's amazing. And uh, I, I, something that came just to my mind now, you know, you've tried different craft in your career now, in your working career as an employee, as in a business owner. Do you find anything particular that resonates in every single work? Something that we say, okay, this is a skill that I need to train, develop for any job that I'm going to do. Something that I've definitely found is personally to me is that is. Yeah. Is patience. Patience has been the number one thing that I've found has been, you know, vital um, to any industry that I've worked in or to any employees I've dealt with or, you know, being patient is such a a skill to have because, you know, in this era, you know, year 2020, we want things yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And it's innate, uh, sorry, and it's through conditioning, you know, whether it's through social media or whether it's through our peers, it's who we surround ourselves with. Everyone's pressured, you know, to have things done immediately. And, you know, by all means, my age, yes, I'm 29, but for me, age is just a number. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, your experience says everything. But for me, you know, even at the age of 29, I've always been patient in, you know, any position or anything I've done. I've, you know, never wanted it straight away um, mm-hmm. to some degree. Because so let me interrupt you because this can answer to many people and to myself as well. So have you been patient in a way that you waited to ask or you've been patient in a way that you've been waiting to be asked? I've been patient in a way, in a way to be asked. Okay. Um, well done. I've, I've always been a big believer that, you know, we have to give before we receive. Um, That's, and that's something I've read a book actually. Uh, I think you recommended the book to me. um, I think it would, from what I recall, I think it was the the giver or the go giver. Oh, the go giver. Uh, Yeah. 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 I'm sure I I suggested that to you. It's a wonderful book, huh? 
you did research us through, sorry, I couldn't remember it. And that book, you know, really oh, solidified, yeah. it really solidified things, um, even for myself to, you know, not expect, even with, you know, being kind or yeah. just being a human being, don't always expect you do things, you know, from your heart, not yeah. because you want something in return. No. And through being like that, you never know what eventuates. Mm -hmm. So through the patience, yes, uh, I haven't been one to, to always to ask. I mean, you know, depending on your situation or whatever you, the position you're in. But for me, it's been something that, you know, I, I've just been very patient with, you know, steps I've taken in well, life. Uh, and that's something that I share a lot in my journey with my apprentices, with the, with the guests that come on the show. They all share that. And in Italian, we say the patient is a virtue. Yes. Patient is actually a virtue. There are four virtues and I can't remember the other three at the moment, but I think patience rules it all. Like if you're patient, everything will come at the right time for you. You know, it's a, there's another beautiful saying that saying the teacher will appear when the students is ready. And exactly. so it's very and true. It's very true. It is. And you know, the books that I've read thus far, yeah. um, you know, all the podcasts or, you know, my morning rituals or routines yeah. I've done thus far, you know, it's through being patient because I've developed these, I've learned these skills. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, God knows it, it frightens me and excites me to know in 10 years time when I look back. Oh, my goodness. What, my what goodness. Rituals, you know, at 39, at 49, to what rituals I'm going to be using then. So yeah. I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, that I've, uh, talking about looking back, but I want to uh, say something about looking forward. There's, you know, there's an Hollywood actor. His name is Michael McHoney, something like that. He did many movies, Interstellar, and that's one that really struck with me. But he says one thing. Somebody asked him, asked him one day, who is your inspiration? Who is your idol? And he says one thing that unbelievable to me. He says, it's me in 10 years. That's who I want to be like. I want to be like me in 10 years, which from one side is very egoistic and selfish, but on the other side, it's also selfless because you know that you're not ready to be that one yet. Of course. So you're aspiring to become yourself in 10 years. And uh, there's such a good philosophy behind that. And I just wanted to share that. But you said, I have another question for you that I was thinking today. And this is more related to people that are actually active and they live in the sport and they do sports. You play soccer for many years, haven't you? Or, yes, I played soccer. For yeah. Yes, I played soccer or football, as you as you want to call it, for fifteen years, which was also very crucial to my development and my journey. And that's where I wanted to go. There's anything, and one thing I want to say is you're so disciplined. Your discipline, it's. Unbelievable. I wasn't that disciplined. It, it's, it's, I don't know. You learned it with your sport. It's within you. I have no idea. I have no idea. So, some things I feel, uh, you know, innate in people, but definitely learn through playing sport. Um, and going back, I guess, you know, certain things that we speak about, you know, when you look back at this, yeah. you pick up on some key things like, for example, patience yeah. in times with my sport. Mm -hmm. I played, and you may not know, I played soccer for 15 years. Yeah. And from the moment I played soccer, I, I think I started at the age of eight or seven. Yeah. I, I'll be honest with you, I was absolutely terrible. Mm -hmm. I would sit on the bench till at least the age of 17. Yeah. I would practically be a player who had no technical ability, yeah. who, you know, was always one of the last players to get picked. Yeah. I used to actually go home and cry to my parents oh. and cry to say, why, why won't the coach pick me? Mm -hmm. But in that and through that, I spent a lot of time with my father training. I was okay. very, okay. Pers very persistent. I constantly played. Um, I actually decided to, you know, play in lower leagues so yeah. I could develop more senior experience. Mm -hmm. And through that, I ended up, and something I'm very proud of till today, is, you know, I ended up being a captain of, you know, a state league um, team at the time. You know, the team was in the state league and I was the captain for two years and, you know, I was well, one of the man, youngest that's players. A, that's amazing. But, that's amazing. Such but a good through, story. Yeah, and, and I developed so much through being the captain, you know, leading players, giving prep talks, and that really 
when, when I reflect on that, that's really something that I'm very proud of because that patience got me to that point. Um, you know, I stuck to it and I know many players to today who, you know, were a lot better, just to give you an example, who were a lot better at me at those younger ages. However, now, you know, at the time of when I decided to stop playing, they no longer played. Yeah. Um, and I had really excelled because I really wanted to, you know, be patient and work on my skills of whatever reason it was. Yeah. A question for you. Do you consider yourself resilient as well for these reasons? Uh, definitely. That, that's mm. definitely something that I live by. Mm. Resilience. Um, I, I just, my outlook on things is, you know, I just don't stop. If I, if I really want something, I'll try. And it yep. wasn't the fact of, you know, I didn't become a professional soccer player or, you know, whatever it was, but, you know, I was resilient to, to keep trying, to keep pushing. Um, and it's honestly taught me so much to, to today uh, through, you know, that journey of my sporting career. <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable. So share a bit of, your, of the resource that you, you, you're using now. But I think there's a difference between the resources, like uh, podcast books and stuff, video, YouTube, that you use when you are a teenager, uh, early 20 years old, and now that you're almost 30. So just to share with the audience, what have, you, what have been the steps that it got to the resources that you're using today? Yeah, well, I'll be completely honest with you. From where I started and from where I am now, you know, resources and, you know, podcasts and books that I've read are very different. Mm -hmm. You know, coming through the ages of, you know, when I was 18, 19, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't, you know, doing the practices that I am now or reading the books I am now. Um, you know, I actually didn't really like reading because I never thought I was very good at reading. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I first started, um, from early ages of 20, I would listen to books or, you know, okay. listen to podcasts. I, cho I chose not to read. Um, yeah. But then I learned and, you know, developed the courage and confidence to say, you know what, it's time to start reading um, because, you know, I didn't like reading at school mm -hmm. and I, something I didn't really like, I didn't like school in general. <laughs> so, um, you know, through that, then I developed the podcast. You know, I read books. I've always been interested in books in self-development. Yeah, um, such as? So I mentioned a few to you. Um, yeah. the, Think one, of the rich. That, one of the books that was a real pivot point for me was Weaning It by okay. Emma Isaac. I never um, read that. I highly recommend it. So the book's called Weaning, Weaning It by Emma Isaac. And it's about, you know, saying yes to things and just going with the flow, going with if a new opportunity presents, just go with the, if you haven't prepared for it, just wing it, just take the chance and, you know, whatever comes for it, it's ba based on our perception. Yes, of course, even if you are afraid. Even yeah. if you are afraid or even if you don't want to step up on stage or even if me, this, you know, with a podcast similar to me sitting with yourself, this yeah. is my first podcast that I'm very honoured to be, be a this part is, of. This is um, one of the first, let me tell you for sure. So, you one know, of the for main. me, it's something that when you asked me, I just went with it. I, I said, you know what, I'm going to go with it. I'm not going to prepare. I'm, you know, this is who I am and, yeah. you know, there's a reason why I am in this position. But that was one of the books that definitely was a pivoting point. I read, um, I've read many others, but I'll just point out the ones that have been really yeah. um, special to me. Another one was on self-care. Yeah. Um, so, it's a book of self-care, which is something that I'm a big believer of. Mm -hmm. um, you know, loving ourselves first and putting yourself first. And it's practical about flowing with the body and flowing with yourself. Yeah. Um, because we really true don't, truly don't discover who we are. We so don't that, respect that ourselves. Was, that's right. And that was definitely a, another book that was very influential to me. Podcasts um, are something that I choose to listen to when I exercise. Yeah. So in, instead of, you know, I'm, I'm a very active person. I'm a very big believer of doing activity every morning. I don't know how you do that, man. I'm so lazy. You can tell by my body shape. But I wish I had 1% of the discipline that you have. So it's something that, like, for me, I'm a big on routine. Yeah. Um, and my mornings are everything. So it's something that I've replaced music with in the mornings is I'll listen to podcasts. Um, so, you know, you know, all the names that I'll mention, Tony Robbins yeah. and Gary Vee, all of these people that are very influential in that space. Yeah. Uh, something that business I, and motivation. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I'm not sure if you know, 
much about it, but I'll mention it anyway. But, um, my wife's very much so into astrology. Yeah. Uh, and astrology of, you know, reading people's natal charts. Yeah. And my natal chart of where my planets were or however yeah. it was aligned. I've got three planets or three houses in business and finance. Okay. And it's something I actually... Just ask her what are my planets, uh, where are they settled to, so I can direct myself on a way. <laughs> for I, the I, future. I will ask her, but it was really, it kind of really solidified it to say why I'm yeah. so drawn to business it and gave, finance. It, it gave you... How do you say? I can't it, say. It, gave you it, it was like confirmation. Yeah, yeah confirmation. And, and for me, by all means, you know, as I said, I've changed my mind so many times. Whether I change my mind moving forward, that's completely fine. But it's something that I'm very drawn to and very passionate about yeah. um, in terms of that business and finance sector. So there's some podcasts I listen to um, and, you know, obviously other practices that I do you know, or now that I do, and I've developed over so the years. So just to tell us, go with us through your day from when you wake up, if you, if you feel like comfortable to share your routine with the people. Of course, most definitely. The, uh, I absolutely love uh, the day and in terms of what I plan. Yeah, go um, for it. Do you run? <laughs> well, you do, you do you, you do you. I'm, 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 very, I'm very routine based. Um, for example, so my morning is, you know, I choose to wake up whether it's 6.30 or 7 a.m. I like to, to try to wake up at the rise of the sun or wake up early, early as possible. I'll meditate for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. um, something that I do every day. Um, so that's very important to me. I'll then journal um, and I feel like I journal my thoughts. So I, you know, I get all my thoughts out prior to starting the day. Um, so I start my mind after a meditation on a very clear level, um, express my thoughts or, you know, things that I want to do that day or things that are in my mind. And um, it's something that I release. So then they know, so, so, sorry to interrupt you. So they know always task based. Not always task based. Okay. No, not always task based. Maybe things that are in my mind. Um, you know, I, I like structure and routine, but sometimes it doesn't always flow to structure and routine. Sometimes, yeah. you know, things come up uninterruptedly that you need to handle, um, you know, especially in what, whether it's business or whatever you do, mm -hmm. constantly attending to things. Uh, so I'll then exercise, which is something I live by. Do you go in, to the gym or you do that in nature? Um, it depends. I try to change it. I will find, you know, I'm at the gym four times a week or, you know, three, let's say three to five times a week. And the other days I'll try and maybe go for a run or whether it's a walk at the beach. However, I feel, you know, in terms of releasing endorphins and even within myself, yeah. if I start the day with exercise, you know, even some days I don't want to get up, whether it's yeah. winter, whether it's cold. But you... I, I choose to get up um, because it, it, set, it sets the tone for the day. For me, I know that I'm able to perform at a much higher level by me exercising in the morning and that's something that works for me but by all means you know what works for me may not work for someone else so you have to find what routine works for you that's something that i've discovered there's no winning formula i no. feel like we're always we're always seeking the winning formula whether it's business whether it's health and nutrition whether it's how to you know whatever it is gain you know bigger muscles for example of it, course you know it has to be tailored to you and that's something that this is the routine that i find is tailored to me because I've tried many different ones. Um, uh, I've tried adding different things to it to some degree, and this is the one that works for me. So I'll exercise, and then obviously from that point, I'll have a very nutritious breakfast. Yeah. Which food and nutrition is very important to me, as you know, mm -hmm. um, because you know I'm a big believer is what we fuel our bodies, you know, what we exert. So I try to fuel it with goodness, um, whether it's you know smoothies and so forth. Um, that's something that is very important. And then I'll start my day going into business yep. and going to the business um, and then and so on. Practically business will consume. Uh, uh, how do you go down at the end of the day? Business will consume three quarters of the day. And then generally to, to go home, um, I generally wind down. I, I'm a big believer of when I arrive home, I like to disconnect. Yeah. Um, I like to disconnect from from the business and yeah. you know i enter home you know then it's my space to spend with my wife space to spend with the family yeah um so try to disconnect and you know, not infuse it so you know that's your sacred space and 
it's just like a space for a reason. So I choose to, to unwind by you know, spending time with the family, having dinner and, you know, just relaxed. Prior That's to awesome. Going to sleep. So, um, yes, go on. Yeah, I just want to go into a bit of actuality now, you know, during COVID and stuff. How, how, is, uh, how are you there? How are you living this time in Sorrento? Uh, based on this pandemic that we're yeah. experiencing? Yes, of course. I, look, as I mentioned before, it depends on your perception. But for me, it's been one of the most positive things or one of the, one of the, the greatest things that's happened to me personally and, you know, even to the family. Um, obviously, business-wise, no, of course. However, you know, through what's happened, we've learned a different sector of the business. Yeah. Um, but going back to why it's been a great thing that's happened to me and the families, because, you know, we've really been able to spend time with one another. We've been able to discover ourselves, more importantly, you know, through doing hobbies or through doing things that we never knew we enjoyed doing. Yeah. Um, you know, really working on those relationships, whether it's relationships with a loved one or with its family or peers that we generally wouldn't you know, develop or wouldn't spend time on because we're so engrossed and focused um, on, you know, our daily operations and sometimes we lose that. Mm -hmm. So in, in some degree, it, it's been real positive and even another one to touch on business. Um, it's been great also, for example, for uh, I've learned through interviews, um, you know, I never used to once upon a time do interviews on Zoom chat, yeah. um, something that was very foreign to me. It was always face to face, and yeah. not to say face to face isn't important, but it's something that I realized that you know through video chat and through technology, I'm able to engage on a, an interview. So, and it can be a successful interview, which which I've had happen. So that's been something that's been amazing. And did it affect a lot the business? Um, look, in general, not yours, but in general, uh, w what are the voices around? Because, of course, I'm not in Victoria, so I don't know. I can tell you that no, in South Australia, it's been affecting a few businesses, but it didn't touch my business. My business tried, yes. for example. Yes, look, um, in terms of business, it, it definitely has affected Victoria. I mean, you know, there'll be 40, 50 percent businesses that don't reopen. You know, it's okay. frightening to see. But the positive thing has been is we've been fortunate that with our business, we've had to pivot. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something that's very important in business as well. Yeah. Based on evolve. Your evolve. whatever it is, you mm -hmm. pivot. And, you know, whether it's pivoting and, you know, you move to selling um, a new product, pre-packed meals, for example, still within the hospitality sector. Yeah. So pre-packed meals, we've switched to a delivery mm -hmm. service. So it's something that we have to pivot the whole business um, in order to stay in the game in order to yeah. stay within the area of Sorrento and provide that service. Um, and it's something that we've done successfully. Um, has it been challenging? Yes, it has been challenging, but it's something that, as I said, you develop a new aspect of business. You learn a new, a new side of takeaway service, for example. So overall it has been challenging, but if depending how you look at it, um, you know, we're fortunate that we're, we're still operating um, and operating with uh, an incredible team, but based on what's happened and the events we've endured, we've been able to learn new aspects and, you know, pivot in a successful way. Mm -hmm. what, are you, what is the main role in the business at the moment? Your main role? What, what, what are your tasks? What do you do? What will you take care of? Uh, so <laughs> overall, overall, it's probably at the moment, it's, you know, man, I could say managing practically from uh back of house front of house um almost like a managing director to some degree okay uh, so it's uh, obviously there's support there but there's there's a, a lot um that i'm you know faced with a lot that i um practically presented with and i know i've probably i've spoken with you in the past about it um you know my beliefs and you know having certain practices and policies in place or having certain, you know, figures in place that will kind of attend to certain things. And mm -hmm. it's something that I've, I'm still trying to implement and I feel you can never kind of, how can I say it? You can never have it organized to some degree that you'll never have to improve it. There are always yeah, ways and things that I feel that you can improve. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of, yeah, in terms of the role of definitely be, you know, a managerial I, 
Yeah, sorry, keep going. No, definitely that manager aspect of, you know, managing director to some point. But for me, it's, it's even disregard the, the title, disregard anything. For me, it's, it, the title means nothing. I'm, you know, having a business, it's not about having a business. It's, you know, more about the process of things. Um, yeah. the process of and serving you know, the being, customers that come in the business that's right being being in that industry being in an industry that you're passionate mm-hmm. about or being in you know business mm-hmm. that you're passionate about dealing with people on a daily basis um you know i feel like when you even just in general when you chase things for a title or when you chase things for, for money finance, mm-hmm. completely have to dis- i lost you for a second and uh, I had and I, I had a question exactly related. That's why I asked you. That's why I asked you. Are you okay? Can you are you can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Just in relation to what you just said, that you you like to put in place policies, rules, and uh, philosophy. I would say at work. Uh, what's your main philosophy as a leader? What would you what when? So let's say you are at the top. Of the chain okay of the pyramid and you of course are a leader and not a boss i can tell and i knew that already when i met you what is the thing that you will like the people that work with you to take away with them once they leave the place they work something, with you? sorry cut out there something that i would like people to take away yeah exactly from you that they can learn from you what would you like to share? What would you like them to, to embrace that they can learn from you? If there is something that you think you're very good at into spreading into society, what, what is that? Something that I find that I'm good with um, or even through working with people yeah. to, to take away with um, would definitely be, you know, communication mm-hmm. is definitely something that's very important um, and would definitely be to, you know, have that, communication to pursue or to have that communication to you know push for that next position um but something for example for me i i like self-growth i like personal growth i like yeah. development um and i am a big believer that even through the employees i don't like to you know disallow or stop that growth um i'm all about self-growth i'm all about self-development and whether it's an employee wanting to potentially move to a new position um whether it's a potential employee who wants to or an employee that wants to move to a different company i'm all about encouraging that and that is encouraged through communication that's something for me you know i'm you know in the past i've had an employee who's wanted to join the real estate industry and I was all through, I was more than happy. I actually put them in contact with a, a local real estate agent um, okay. well done. Who, who actually, you know, was able to help that person because for me, that's something that's very important. Why should someone remain or do something that they want to do every day or something that they feel they want to do every day? Unhappy. Happiness is, is key. So I guess also t- in, entwining with the communication is probably happiness, something that they can take away from. Happiness is, is very important for me. I want that person to be happy with whatever they're doing. If they're not, how can we change it? If it's, I want to work as a real estate agent, for example, let's make it happen by all means, because truly if we're not happy and we're not fulfilling our happiness, then, you know, what are we doing? Oh, I completely agree. And on these notes, going to all your procedures skills and uh, rules and policies uh, there's a book that i would like to suggest to they would like yes. to suggest you which is principles from ray dalio which is the yes. owner of the bridgewater edge funds in america and uh, he decided recently to of course to retire and to write down all the principles that he's written about life and business yes you i've actually that. got that book oh you I do Oh, you need to read it now. That's a wonderful so, book. It's a very long book. But as you as you say, I think the the quote you said when when was it when the teachers when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Yeah. So I've had that book and I purchased it a long time ago, but yeah. I haven't read it because I haven't been drawn to it. Yeah. Or I course. haven't felt like it's been my calling to read it. Yeah. Um, and that's happened with many books. And when I feel I it's can, right, uh, yeah, yeah. 
I read it and I, oh, that book I bought three years ago, it's time for me to read it now. So I feel like this could be the calling to me to read it. (laughs) Probably, probably. It is nothing happens for mistake, man. Nothing is uh, an accident as well. And uh, on that note, uh, saying that actually the, the book calls you, that happened to me the same with an Italian book. I was 22. My best friend in Italy gave me as a gift this book from Tony Robbins. I said, I'm not going to read that thing there. Awaken the Giant Within was the title. Uh, in Italian, it's completely different. It means uh, it's actually the title is How to Obtain the Best from Yourself and from the Others. Ah, completely Very different. Yeah. So, and I had it there on the bookshelf for many years. And then before I came to Australia, I sold my scooter. So I had to ride or catch a bus to work. So I said, you know what? I grabbed that book and I read it. So I started reading it and I think I was 25 at that time, 26. So it's been in the bookshelf for three years. And then I read it the first time when I was 25. And when I came into Australia and I started my self-development growth by myself, that happened to, I happened to read the same book in English as well. And it was a completely wow. different book. Completely That's different. Book. So I've oh. decided now, now that I use Audible, Mm, and of course he's not a sponsor of the podcast i wish so but now that i use audible i Can find it much day. easier uh, i'll be much it, be, it is much easier to to read and yes. uh, actually to listen and i've decided you know they give you a book for one credit for a month i don't yes. know if you if you used to to the system and I've decided that it usually takes me four hours to read it. And I usually finish it in two days. But for all that month, I listen to the same book. Interesting. I keep listening wow. to it. I keep listening to it. And uh, the amount of knowledge that I find afterwards, after the first one, after the second one, the third one, and then you keep going. Some, some books I've read 10 times. To- I've listened to 10 times, 15 That's incredible. times. Yeah. I love it. I love it. It's not about, it's not about how many books you can read. But it's about how many books you can become. Fantastic. Yeah, oh, it's, I couldn't uh, agree more. That's incredible. That's a really good way of putting it. Yeah, and uh, I, I think that in everything, you know, once you become the craft that you do, you are uh, one with universe. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the main purpose of life. You know, become one. Understand, be grateful. That's one thing that I do a lot to be grateful. Before I go to sleep, as soon as I wake up, I say my thanks for all the good stuff that we have. Yeah, it's, it's something I, I feel that gets forgotten about. Um, and gratitude is, is so important to be grateful. Sometimes, you know, we don't appreciate the small things in our life. And, you know, we're always, you know, not everyone, but we're always on that chase to, you know, go for that next thing or whatever it is, achieve that next position or whatever it could be buy that next house, for example, whatever anyone's goals or ambitions are, but yeah. we're really not grateful of the position we're in now, you know, grateful, you know, for the two of us to be on this podcast no. uh, and have met each other, very blessed. So, yeah, gratitude is, is so important. I think this one is a friendship to last, David. I think I this one is a friendship to last. And uh, for many reasons. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the podcast, I had my doubts when I seen you. At the beginning, of course, I was a, a chef, so a very different mindset, very narrow. Okay, chefs are very narrow in their own environment. They can only see the kitchen. They struggle to see. They struggle to see the front of the house, for example. There's always a kind of a challenge. Who's better? Who's the best chef? Who's the worst chef? And you slowly grow, and you you understand that you're just one of the many, and. Uh, and it's about what you give, as you said before, to whatever you receive with the mindset and the idea that you're not going to receive anything without expecting anything. That's how you do it. Of course. And um, saying that, I have one thing to say. What would, you, uh, what would you suggest or if there is uh, something that you would like to say to David when he was 19, what, would it tell? Well, what suggestion would you give him to, to pursue his dreams, his career, to grow? What's one thing? One thing only. One thing I can tell you straight away is to love yourself. That's definitely one thing that I would say. To truly discover 
and discover who you are. So for David to discover who he was at 19, to love himself for who he was at 19, mm-hmm. because if, uh, if, you know, that advice there to discover who you are, when we know who we are, then, you know, everything is unlimited. When we love ourselves, we can love others. Yeah. We can, you know, give to others, you know, when you truly know who you are as a person and based on, you know, from where I am now, from the opportunities, the experiences that I've gained, you know, it doesn't exactly mean I've always known who I was Mm -hmm. or, you know, I've always, you know, discovered who I was as a person because I, you know, went in different ventures and, you know, did many different things, but it's now the position I am in and through all the self growth and self development that I've truly Mm -hmm. understood that Mm -hmm. I've realized now who I am. Um, I do definitely love myself. I tell myself in the morning in the mirror, for example, that I love myself Mm -hmm. Um, because, you know, as I said, if we discover who we are, our self-awareness, which is very important, then everything else will flow Mm -hmm. because, you know, at the ages of 18, 19, whatever it may be, whether it's through insecurities and we've all experienced it. So did I, whether it's through insecurities, whether it's through fear, you know, you know, fear of doing something or fear of, changing industries or changing positions or posting something that we we really fearing of doing through peers and others Mm -hmm. you know if we truly love ourselves we won't have that fear we will just go with it believe just believe in the flow as you said and while you were communicating all your thoughts i've just a sentence put everything that you said about self-love patience and follow the course of the events, I put everything into one sentence and it is let yes be the answer. Yes. I think you see <laughs> perfect. Let That's yes be the answer. I think that will be the title of this podcast. I really, I think it really resonates with uh, who you are, what you shared today and uh, what the people are going to get out of this podcast. At least this is what I got the most out of. I think the most important thing that I got out of you today that inspired me, it sounds bad to say out of you, but that inspired me a lot from you was the fact that you said, yes, go with the flow, accept the challenge, say yes, and uh, more than love yourself, more than be patient, because I think they all got together. Once you understand that, the only way it's forward is progress, progress. It all comes together. Most definitely. And at the end of that, oh, I mean, the core of that is happiness. Yeah. We want to be happy, you know, whatever it is. But once we do discover who we are, yeah. um, and as I said, once you really do love yourself, the rest will flow because yeah. nothing's holding you back. No. We, we set our own limits as mm-hmm. individuals mm-hmm. and we are our own limits. So yeah. that's true. A struggle. There's a, there's a, there, there is a book called Be So Good They Can't Ignore You from Carl Newport that I struggle to agree with. And it's okay. But he says that we shouldn't follow what, we, what our passion are, what makes us happy. Just do a craft and that craft will make you happy if you pursue, if you keep uh, persevering, if you keep be persistent into learning it because you'll become a bit, uh, the best at it. But on the other side, if I think myself personally... I will never be able to do something that I don't like. I'm so much egoistically, selfishly drawn towards something that I like to make that I can't be so selfless and not doing something that I love. You know, I'm doing a podcast because I love to share. I love to communicate. And that's incredible. That's amazing that you've been able to know that at... Um, your age and be able to discover that because you know people live a lifetime without knowing or out without discovering themselves and they will do a job that they hate yeah. for whatever it is 40 50 years and you know what i think comes down to it is you know through them having the pressure of fear through them having insecurities fear of changing fear of you know what others will think of them and it's incredible that you know you where you are where you are today through you know you know what makes you happy so yeah i mean people, as you said you've read that book and people can do a position up be in a position that they've mastered because yeah. they've worked for x amount of years but if it doesn't truly make them happy then yeah. what well, are we living the purpose of pursuing it i agree exactly. i agree and uh, guys just follow your dreams follow what you like do what you like you see that's the answer why do we need to live a life 
doing something that we don't like. Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Life is one, the one that you live in now that you can experience. You won't be able to experience the, the next one now or the past one. That's the only life that you want. And on this note, I love what Gary Vee says a lot. He says, you need to become self-aware. You need to be able to communicate to the people that you think are the people that are stopping you from achieving what you want or doing what you want that you like just because of your, you are afraid of the thoughts that they produce. That's right. What they're thinking about you. And uh, yeah, you need to become self-aware. And I love another thing that says, I quote so many people because I love quotes. That's my way of being very synthetic and very powerful. Jay Shetty, I don't know if you know him. Yes, I've heard of him. Yeah, yeah. and he, he learned something in his monk life. He learned something that somebody told him, which is, we are not who we think we are. We are not who somebody think we are, but we are what we think somebody else think we are. Incredible. And it's very true. It's very true. We think too much. Stop thinking. Just leave. Most definitely. Start and, uh, doing. Yeah, I would like to wrap it up, David, with uh, one last question, which is, what's the future holding for you now? What does the future hold for yeah, me? Yeah. Or what, very... What's your uh, 10 years goal? Or, you know, if you have a goal that you are comfortable to share or some next step that you already plan in advance? Um, in terms of myself, what I, you know, what I'm living now, yeah. um, I'm, I'm very happy with, with what I'm living now and with what I'm learning. Um, it's definitely moving forward. It's to continue um, or even to start to some degree by sharing um, and by empowering others. Um, moving forward, I'd like to empower others mm -hmm. um, and help through sharing, you know, whether it's my journey um, to, for people to live their best life um, and, you know, find true happiness. It's, this is um, the beginning, what, David. Today most definitely. Will it, listen to you. It most definitely is the beginning and it's something that I'm very drawn to. I'm very passionate about but that's what my future holds and I'll be honest with you I haven't set a, a 10 or 5 year goal I don't have yeah, anything yeah, yeah. I don't have anything structured and that's why I'm, I'm not going to uh, tell you yeah. uh, because I don't have anything planned but for me that's what I'm drawn to and that's something that I'm very passionate about mm -hmm. and whether that is through business um, you know through the books I read I like to go with the flow to some point um, you know that's why I'm in hospitality today yeah. who would have known um, yeah. no one knew but that's why I don't like to structure it to that degree of a five or 10 year tailored plan. I like to see wherever, wherever I'm drawn to, whatever I'm taken to, mm -hmm. um, I know I'm taken there for a reason and I'll learn or gain some type of, you know, experience from that. So yeah, the future is exciting. I'm super pumped to know what, you know, every day to know what, where, where, which direction I'm heading in and, you know, whether it's through influencing and helping others, yeah. but you know, I know it's going to be something, or it already is incredible and it will continue to become oh, incredible. It will, I don't feel comfortable to say anything, but I can definitely say that you are an amazing human being. Today, I discovered one more quality of you, which is consistency. You're so consistent. Consistent in a wonderful way, which is you have been saying all during this hour and a bit, that you are resilient, uh, that you're patient, uh, that you go with the flow. And your last answer, just synthetic, synth whatever, makes it a very synthetic answer to it. And you're very, very consistent. Like you just mentioned everything. You said, I can't tell you what my future is holding because I don't expect my future to be somehow in the way that I like it or the way that I see it. But I know that it will be brilliant because I will follow my passion, what I would love to share. Practically, that's it. And that's why, you know, I live today. I don't live yesterday. I don't live tomorrow. I live today. So yeah. that's how yeah, I choose. We forget, we forget that. And there was a very good way to end the podcast. I loved it. I want to say thank Oh, before you go, please, can you share your Instagram uh, tag and also where people can find you in Sorrento what, what, what's your business name and where they can find you yes the business is Italico Sorrento um, obviously they can find us on Instagram on Italico Sorrento yeah. and also you know, my personal Instagram is obviously David Straniero um, so people are more 
then happy to find me on my personal social media. And you can find but, that in the description for sure. If you're watching the video on YouTube, you'll find it in the description below. If you're listening to the podcast, you just need to click on the description and you will find the link to Italico Sorrento and to David uh, Tag on Instagram. I just wanted to mention, obviously, you've been a very good friend of mine um, and, you know, we've had a, a very long relationship from when we met each other till now and i just want to say you probably don't hear it enough but you know honestly with what you're doing and how far you've come i just want to thank you personally for not only having me on this podcast but for also entering my life at that right time um, because you know we've had a few encounters and i think that's why we're both here today to some degree because we've had you know incredible influence on each other yeah, so you know totally Thank you for everything that you do and everything you share. You're honestly doing an incredible, incredible job. Thank you so much. That humbles me a lot. Really means a lot as well. Welcome. And uh, I hope to have a chat with you soon. I'll speak yeah. often to other people of your family, which is amazing to keep the contact. And say hello to all the lovely people in your Hello. family, please, because uh, I really love them. And... Uh, I'll see you next time, David. Let me... Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye.